Good morning. It's day 31. And I just got dropped off by my shuttle driver, Steve, who is awesome and informative. And I will, um, I'll probably leave his, his information somewhere. Maybe right here. And um, so I'm doing a slack pack today. And so I don't have all my gear. I do have some warm gear, sleeping bag, and a bivy. Um, but I'm going 20 miles, and I'm going southbound back to the hostel I was in last night. And um, some rain is going to move in about midday. And so this is a way that um, I can be heading to a dry place um, even in the rain. So I'm taking advantage of... Uh, where I am in Irwin to 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 do this for a day. Another nice thing about the way I'm doing it today, going southbound, is that uh, I'm at the hostel that I'm hi hiking back to down on the river. So I figured I was on the Nolotucky River, so I'd be down low. And Steve just just drove me up into the mountains, so that's a net downhill. And, and I'm kind of gaming the system a little bit. I admit that. Do I have a problem with it? Absolutely not. I do have a pretty good climb right off the bat to uh, Unica Mountain. And uh, that's one of those islands of uh, conifers that, that you don't see down south a lot, that you see pretty commonly up in Maine, so I'm looking forward to going up and over Unica Mountain. The other thing about the day is the rain is supposed to move in around noon. So I hope to be, I don't know if I will be, but I hope to be over Unica Mountain by then. And I hope the rain is late. Nice little view here. Still early in the day, so far it's very pleasant. I'm down to a t-shirt and cruising along. Trail conditions are great. So I just passed a group of maybe six teenagers and they were heading the opposite direction and they had gone the wrong way for three miles. So they went six miles out of their way. And uh, so they're gonna be up at Roan Mountain Shelter tonight. They said they'd leave some dry firewood for me. So I appreciate that. But these guys were, had all the exuberance of, who knows, 17, 18 year old, year old that, that you might expect. Uh, six extra miles is not gonna phase this group. Steve, my shuttle driver, is a great guy. I enjoyed talking with him. Um, he's, he retired from a job that gave him a little bit of a pension but not much because he hadn't been working enough years. So he started this shuttle business to supplement things. So you got to hand it to him for developing a second and even third career for him. And uh, so Steve was telling me about Irwin as we, as we drove around this morning and uh, coming up the mountain. And uh, it's a, it's a beautiful small town. It's got really nice bones. There was a railroad facility here, I think it's CSX. Um, had a maintenance facility of some sort, big operation, and about 15 years ago or so, they pulled up and left town. So that's made it hard on this town. And we also passed this, uh, I mean, it looks like a manufacturing plant from the outside, but Steve said it's a place where they take enriched uranium and they make, I guess, fuel rods for reactors on submarines and ships and that kind of thing. And, you know, I'd like to know exactly how they do it, but I'm pretty sure they don't open the doors and just let somebody walk in there and look around. But, being the energy geek I am, tonight, when I'm back dry in the hostel, 
uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about nuclear power and uranium enrichment. It's going to be fun. I see a lot of these wrappers for, you know, bars and things along the trail. And I don't think anybody's out here intentionally dropping those. They're really light. They fall out of your pockets. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I've lost a few myself. So I like to I like to pick these up and I figure me and the trail can call it even Steven. All right, these conifers are start, starting to come in as I climb. Um, a week ago or so when I was hiking with Haystack, he said those higher regions, especially in the Smokies, reminded him of his home in Maine. It smelled like it and it looked like it. Still climbing up Unica Mountain. But look at this. This, this little patch of Maine forest down here in the south, clinging to the the, the top of a mountain. And uh, I don't. What do you do? You call it a biome or a microbiome? If there's an ecologist out there, um, help me out with this one. But this is a, a really unique. Uh, experience in here. It's completely different than the valley below. By the way, when I, I'm talking about a technical issue or a natural e resource issue, um, or really anything, don't don't assume <laughs> I'm an expert or I always get my facts uh, correct. Um, my my fact checker my fact checker isn't always with me. Um, Except for energy and the environment, you can trust me there. No, I've got, um, I've gotten at least one thing wrong. That, uh, back in the smoke, well, after the Smokies, there was this uh, antenna, and I think I said it was a Doppler radar, and somebody corrected me on that, and I do appreciate it, um, and I don't mind at all being corrected. Um, that's a great way to learn things. So cool. I feel like I have to walk slow through here. Trying to zip right through it would feel like, it would feel irreverent, I guess. Is coming. Best candy bar made. All right, lunch at Beauty Spot. I'm so happy to have made it up here before the rain. Got some company up here, but uh, I'm just gonna enjoy it. And I'm about halfway back to Irwin. That's a cloud rolling in. Ten miles to go. The cloudy fog moved in, but still no rain. No complaints. It's 12.30. Steve, my uh, shuttle driver, 
just texted it. He said the rain that was set to move in looks to be holding off to the north. Let's hope my, my luck holds on that one. So about that facility here in Irwin that takes enriched uranium and makes, uh, I, I guess they make fuel rods for nuclear reactors for naval submarines and ships, that, that kind of thing. Um, I have my own experience that I wanted to share with uranium enrichment. Um, as a young young inspector with, with the EPA, I was told to go to the, Padu the Paducah gaseous diffusion plant. And uh, for a long time, that facility is not operating, but for a long time, uh, for over 50 years, that facility took um, uranium, um, which came from um, a facility across the Ohio River, um, and they, they took ore and made uranium hexafluoride, and then they sent it to this, this facility that I went to. And the, the, the job there was to um, enrich it, which means you have two isotopes of uranium, 235 and 238. So to, for fission, you need it to be enriched in 235. And so they would take this and they would run it through this massive, massive seri series of compressors. And eventually they would get enriched uranium. And um, they, would, uh, they would get two large tanks. And I mean like eight feet in diameter and 15, 15 feet. Uh, long of depleted uranium and one tank per day of enriched uranium. Uh, and the interesting thing, and, I'll, and Google Earth is pretty awesome, you can learn a lot of things. What happened to that depleted uranium? Well, it's just sitting there at the at the Paducah gaseous diffusion plant. And there are uh, 50 years, two tanks a day, and, uh, and I'll show you some uh, some screenshots of that now. Also, fun fact, um, to power that uranium er enrichment facility in, near Paducah, um, the Tennessee Valley Authority built an entire coal-fired power plant just to be able to run it. So. So when someone tells you that the nuclear power plants don't don't generate carbon dioxide, um, true, but not entirely true. Also, the the facility generates massive amounts of heat, of heat that had had to be dissipated. And so um, it's probably when it was operational, it was probably the world's largest refrigerator that that they had. And since then, the technology has moved from compressors to centrifuges, and that's how they enrich uranium these days. Also, nuclear power uh, is um, um, generates about 20% of our electricity in the U.S., and it's been that way for quite a long time. It's been pretty, pretty steady that way. Thanks for indulging me on uh, the nuclear power issue. Uh, back to the hike. Um, it did start raining eventually with about seven miles left on the trip. It rained pretty hard. And, um, and so I didn't take any more footage, but I'm back at Uncle Johnny's. And um, tomorrow the plan is to go to the same spot and head the opposite direction. So away from, um, from Irwin. And I will be figuring out where to, um, where to go after that.